Hey Mike, taking a few moments to properly set up your studio monitors will help you to record better and mix better. Let's check it out. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And if you don't know already, this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So if you into that kind of thing, go ahead and hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss none of the action that I'm about to drop on you. Today's video is sponsored by Cali Audio, man. Cali Audio has been making some dope and affordable studio monitors, and they recently just sent me a pair of the new and improved Cali Audio IN8s, which is a three-way monitor, and they've upgraded the components because I did a review on these monitors before, and I had one small problem with the monitors. Although they were great, they had a little bit of a hiss. There was a constant noise, a little white noise, just plugging the monitors up and turning them on. Well, now the new and approved Wave 2, and I like how they use that. I think y'all try to incorporate my name on that. I like, I like how you're thinking. The new improved version of these monitors have been upgraded. They're a lot quieter and they're supposed to perform a lot better. I actually just unboxed them and I got them popped up on my desk right now and it got me to thinking, hey, let's talk to y'all a little bit about how to properly set up some studio monitors. So no matter what monitors you have, it don't have to be these Cali Audios. It don't have to be these Atom Audios. It don't have to be the wavy audio. <laughs> Any monitors that you have, these tips will help you out. So one of the first things that you wanna consider when placing your studio monitors is where should you place them in the room? So if you're working in a rectangular room, you're gonna be asking yourself, should you be using the length of the room? Should you be using the width of the room? And you know, most people will say that you should probably be using the length of the room. Like you want your studio monitors firing the long distance throughout the room. That's just gonna give you a better uh, environment and more space for frequencies to fully form in that room. Now, of course, a lot of us are working in makeshift studios. So if you're in a home studio, a bedroom studio, you're gonna have to make some compromises and work with what you have. So these kind of rules are really just guidelines um, on helping you choose, okay? So definitely think about that. If you have the ability to use the length of the room versus the width of the room, definitely go with the longer end of the room. When you're placing those monitors, there's another thing to consider as well. And they call it the 38% rule. Basically, however long your room is, um, you wanna be sitting in your mixed position where your ears are at about 38% um, distance from the wall behind your studio monitors. So in my case, my room is about 16 feet in length, okay? So I'm just gonna go to my calculator. Now I'm gonna type in 16, okay? So I got my 16 feet up in there. Can y'all even see that? All right, cool, I got my 16. Now what I wanna do is multiply that by 0.38, right? That's gonna give me that 38%, and then this should tell me, and I hit the equal, how far I wanna sit away from the wall behind my studio monitors, how far my desk should be. So that gives me about six feet and actually that's pretty much perfectly where I'm at. I'm about literally six feet from the wall behind me in this chair right now. This is my listening uh, sweet spot, my listening zone. So if I were to turn around that, it basically I would be about six feet from that wall where I'm sitting. Now, another thing to consider is how far you want your uh, monitors to be away from the wall back there as well. Because if I'm gonna be six feet, ideally from that wall, again, if you're working in a bedroom project studio, you probably won't be able to be able to achieve that. But what you also can do is just try to make sure that you're not like in the middle of the room. You wanna avoid that 50% distance and you want to avoid like that 25 percent distance as well because that's where a lot of the room nodes and kind of build up of frequencies can happen when you're sitting in a position like that all right so definitely avoid those positions now me being six feet from the wall and working with that 38 percent distance from the back wall from the behind my monitors that can help me determine where i actually need to place my monitors okay so the next thing that we're going to talk about is going to be the equilateral triangle that we want to kind of place our monitors in now, it's not a true equilateral triangle because in all actuality, you want to be kind of more inside the equilateral triangle versus on the very tip of it. So um, kind of about a foot in or so, you want the speakers to kind of come together 
right behind your head. So if they were, if there was a triangle to where you got one speaker here, another speaker here, you want their, that triangle point to meet kind of right behind your head, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, and that will be more of the sweet spot for your monitor. So what I like to do for that is just break out my measuring tape and I'll measure from the tweeter to tweeter because that's what's really important to me. Tweeters are very directional. So you wanna make sure that that tweeter is really hitting right at your ears, right? So I will measure from tweeter to tweeter. And let's say that from tweeter to tweeter, it's about four feet, right? So if I have four feet from tweeter to tweeter, well, I want each tweeter to also be about four feet from my sweet spot, okay? So then that way I have an equal lateral triangle happening right there. So a measuring tape is definitely gonna help you to achieve this a whole lot better. Another thing that you really want to consider is the height of your monitors, man, because that height and the height of the tweeter especially is so important as high frequencies are very, very directional. And you want to make sure that those frequencies are coming directly to your ears as direct as possible without any interference. So you want to do your best to set your monitors, the tweeter of your monitors at ear level. So when you're sitting in your seat, and this is another little thing too, make sure that you have a seat that, that you can comfortably sit in. Um, basically your torso, your legs should be at a 90 degree angle when you sit uh, down. Both feet should be placed firmly on the ground. Your knees should be at a 90 degree angle. It shouldn't be slanted or sloped or anything. Kind of general uh, uh, sitting practices. You probably also want to have some nice little arm rest as well so you can sit your and rest your arms on as well. But that 90 degree posture from uh, your hips to knees to legs, that is going to be crucial. So when you're sitting there like that, you can take a measuring tape and measure the distance from the floor to your ear. All right? So let's see. <laughs> kind of crazy doing this. All right. So let's just say, huh. Mine is right at about four feet, three inches, okay, as I'm sitting in this chair. So about 51 inches. Now, once I go to adjust the height of my monitors, I wanna make sure that my monitors are at that same height so that the, the tweeters of the monitors are lined up perfectly with my ears. Now, you may need to get a little bit creative with this, depending on if your monitors are sitting on your desk or if you have monitor stands, there are gonna be different approaches to achieving that height. If you have your monitors on monitor stands, most of the time those stands will be height adjustable so that you can either raise them up or lower it down as needed to get them in that perfect height for your listening position. Um, if you are sitting your monitors on a desk, it could be a little bit more tricky to get them in that height. And in my kind of situation, I actually have monitor stands that are mounted to my desk. So what I've found that works for me is actually turning my monitors upside down. So sitting the monitors with the tweeters on the top, the tweeters were just too high. They were above my head, right? When I flip the monitors upside down, that brings those tweeters right in line with my ears, which was perfect. And I haven't been uh, having any problems monitoring like that. It's also good for you to check the paperwork, the manual that comes with your studio monitors, as they will have some recommendations on placing those speakers properly to get the most out of them. Because when they were created, um, the crossover points and all of that, they have recommendations for how you should actually sit and place those monitors. Another thing to consider also, if you're gonna be using your studio monitors on an actual desk, is decoupling the monitors. You can use something as simple as some foam acoustic pads. Um, they even have some ISO acoustic pucks. And I have these uh, ISO acoustic uh, stands here that I'm actually using. All of that is great, but the point is that you wanna decouple the, the monitor from the desk so that whenever the vibrations from the monitor happen, they're not vibrating and creating resonant frequencies from your desk as well. And then not only are you hearing your speakers, you're hearing your desk. We just don't wanna have that happen, all right? So those are the rules of thumb for setting up your monitors on a desk. All right, child, so that has been a quick look on how to improve your sound by setting up your studio monitors properly. If you have any questions, drop down in the comments and go ahead and ask me, I'll get back to you. Um, and if you like this video, just hit a thumbs up, drop down in the comments and let me know there. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Check out the website. You can find some custom session templates best for recording and mixing so that you can get the sound that you want a whole lot faster. Be dope. Thank you.